Good morning, I'm Tom Diaz, Director of Software Products. I'll be talking to a lot of you in Florida about Generous 7.0 and uh, the missions that had us build it and the project by which we build it. This is to give you some perspective in advance uh, about all those things so that there is some guide to our discussion there. Uh, by the way, when you see me reading from notes here, those will also be provided to you along with this tape so that you can read them and uh, watch the tape along with them. Uh, first of all, then, I wanted to talk about the missions that set us on the particular course that resulted in Generous 7.0. Essentially, we felt in March of 1985 that it was time for software development at Symbolics to take the next leap and, and actually produce the next architectural generation in software. Uh, it had been a couple of years since releases 5 and 6 had uh, put together our second generation or third generation software environment and we felt it was time for another major leap forward. And as, as usual, we would apply this architecture to um, the most powerful application we then had, which is the software development environment. So the missions more specifically were that we wanted to uh, develop a superior software development environment, meaning superior tools for developers to use. We wanted to develop a superior software substrate, meaning the technology that is there for the taking by application developers. and uh, by, uh, by being there also constitutes a more powerful environment for the delivery of applications. We wanted to increase the productivity of developers, um, starting with our own for internal reasons of our own, but uh, also as a test that what we were doing did in fact um, produce greater productivity in product development. And fourth, we wanted to respond to a number of specific stimuli from the marketplace. Uh, by and large, these stimuli amounted to specific requests from application developers for new capabilities they wanted and the general concern in the marketplace uh, for better delivery performance and for more options for application delivery. So first, in the area of the software development environment, our, our key statement, if you will, is that we wanted to make it possible for very large projects to be done by small teams of people and for smaller ones to be done by one person. Uh, we really feel that as a result of what we've done, Generous 7.0 provides even more powerful tools for this purpose than our past systems did. Uh, some examples are the system construction tools which allow a developer to construct, or a project team to construct, extremely large application programs made of many modules which may mix different programming languages or definitions of certain things like documentation that aren't programming at all. Uh, second is that we wanted to provide uh, much more intelligent source level debugging facilities for Lisp programmers. Th that is, we wanted to allow them to debug the Lisp language in Lisp rather than in machine code and uh, to provide some intelligent aids that would help them isolate a fault to a particular line of Lisp code. Uh, we did use a lot of the substrate technology that uh, we developed in Genera 7.0 to provide better development tools for people. Uh, the primary example is the dynamic windows technology, which we used to provide things like uh, the frame-up utility and the defined program framework form in our Lisp language. Those are both ways of rapid prototyping uh, a window system or command interface to an application program that you've developed in Lisp. We uh, also provided a, an enhanced flavor examiner using dynamic windows, which uh, is a way of uh, examining new flavor objects in um, a system you're developing. Uh, as I mentioned, we did use dynamic windows in the Lisp uh, debugger so that, for example, when you display, uh, the debugger displays uh, a Lisp source code um, in a Lisp listener context, for instance, the the broken line of code is highlighted in boldface for a programmer and uh, breakpoints can be set and cleared with mouse gestures instead of by typing a lot of complicated commands. Um, last and, and in many ways the most visible use of dynamic windows is the dynamic Lisp listener which allows application programmers on our system or end users of theirs to uh, 
provide a, an interface and use an interface that remembers the context in which they're working and, and helps them get their job done. Um, we also use several other substrate technologies very extensively for better performance, for better reliability, and for greater standardization. The uh, primary examples are the new flavor system, which I already mentioned that we used everywhere in Genera 7.0, uh, the new table system, which we also use very extensively in areas where we store tabular information, and of course the common list language itself, which we use for all of our new uh, development of features. Um, just turning to the substrate area itself, uh, our keynote there was that we don't want to force people to reinvent the wheel, even when they're doing something that's extremely sophisticated. And once again, we feel that Genera 7 provides far more functionality than our previous releases did that's there and ready for people to use in applications. Uh, Dynamic Windows is, again, probably the major architectural achievement of this sort uh, because it unifies a number of different user interface technologies in the one paradigm that a programmer works with. It unifies things like command processing, mouse handling, uh, the remembering of output in particular contexts, and so on. What, what that means to a, a developer and that developer's end user is that one can build a smarter interface to an application. Um, and, and that the interface is not just more powerful and not just snazzier looking, but also easier to learn and easier to use for uh, the application end user. Um, the next piece of substrate uh, that's a major area is the new flavor system, which is a much higher performance and more flexible extension of the old flavor system that we pioneered in the commercial world. Um, the new flavor system allows uh, a much more correct and higher performance object-oriented application to be developed. And um, what's even better, it will integrate very gracefully with the uh, emerging common list standard for object-oriented programming that's being driven and developed by Symbolics and Xerox. Uh, the new table system, as I mentioned, is a much higher performance and more flexible way for a programmer to decide how to store tabular information and then for the application to access those tables. Uh, what that, that, by the way, is a direct but enlarged response to a specific request uh, from application developers who use our systems uh, in third-party companies. Um, but it allows a much easier uh, job and faster job to be done on the front end, the development end, and then a much higher performance delivery environment for their application. And last, again, is the common list language where, uh, once again, we've demonstrated that we are the standard setter company in this area uh, with a, a complete and, and highest performance implementation of that language. Uh, the next mission I mentioned was developer productivity. And, that, and I think I mentioned, too, that uh, one of our desires was to improve our own productivity uh, for reasons of our own and as a test. Uh, well, just to give you one number for now, the, the Genera 7 system was programmed by about 16 people, some of whom were part-time, and uh, that's quite an achievement, and cons consistent with our usual measurement that uh, using Genera and other development tools from us, uh, one's productivity is about four to five times as high as with so-called, um, well, with traditional tools developing so-called comparable systems. Um, meanwhile, incidentally, while Genera was being developed, other personnel and software products were getting the same kind of productivity gain in other areas, such as the ADA system we now have, which also was developed with about five times as few man years as uh, a competitor of ours used to develop an ADA system from the same uh, third-party front-end compiler. Uh, the last area I mentioned in the statement of missions was uh, responding to the market where we felt we had some specific requests uh, from application developers to deal with and uh, also had to address the general concern for more delivery options and greater delivery performance. Taking that last performance category first, um, I'm just reading basically a list of things we have put into Genera 7 that, that are of great value in delivery performance and reliability. First is the optimized world command, which is a command any application developer can use to reduce the amount of paging done by a finished application. Uh, 
we applied that w that command to our own application, Genera, and uh, d and measured a five-fold decrease in the amount of paging required for many important operations like switching windows and other things that involve uh, a process context switch. Um, another thing I mentioned already is that uh, we took a, an explicit request to increase the access uh, performance to hash tables and enlarged it to devise a completely new and more general system called the new table management system. Um, at the delivery end, just in the case of hash tables, what that means is a, is a performance gain in accessing hash tables of about two to three times. And what's more, the system will automatically adopt to even faster and more compact representations of tables uh, as the application requires dynamically. Uh, another feature that is part of the new flavor system is the system, uh, is, excuse me, the feature called uh, flavor constructors, which is about an order of magnitude faster as a way of constructing new flavor objects uh, in an executing program. Um, another important reliability feature in new flavors is the appearance of generic functions as an alternative to message passing. What generic functions help a programmer do is uh, write correct code in the first place in an editor buffer and be able to look at it and test it with uh, the editor's tools for correctness without actually having to execute the entire program. Um, again, I will mention that the ability to uh, offer a high performance and complete common LISP system is uh, quite a benefit in itself, but it's also worth emphasizing that on a Symbolics computer uh, with our system, one can write very high performance common LISP code without having to resort to explicit type declarations in the program, which is something that is simply cannot be done on traditional architectures that some of our competitors use. Um, last, uh, but not least important, is that we did make a number of microcode improvements in Genera 7.0 for all systems in our product line. Uh, we did this partly for the sake of um, competing with uh, other companies who do use benchmarks as a figure of merit, but also because we had looked throughout the life of the Genera 7 project at performance bottlenecks in the system that we knew about already and had fixed some of them. Now, some of those, as some of you have seen, resulted in gains of up to 60% in some of the most important uh, benchmarks in, for example, uh, Gabriel's suite of common list benchmarks. Uh, incidentally, we already have requests for from our, some of our third-party companies for additional microcode enhancements that would help their products run uniquely better on our system. And we're definitely going to work to satisfy requests like that until we run out of microstore, which is going to be a very long time on, on G machines. We have a very large microstore in which to work, and we're going to do that. Um, some more general delivery issues uh, include the things that um, were promulgated by Symbolics in our statement of August 1985 about uh, additional delivery options that we wanted to provide our customers. Um, one was that we wanted to allow application developers to use uh, multiple high-resolution consoles to uh, lower the cost per seat of delivering an application to their end users. Now, we've basically made an awful lot of progress in Genera 7.0 toward that end. Uh, we have the enabling substrate technology in Genera 7 and working. Um, it's still a bit hard for ordinary humans to program, so we still have a bit of software engineering left to do. And there also are some marketing issues to be resolved, but still we've made great technological progress. And, and by, as far as my part is concerned, we've done the hardest part of the job already. Uh, another desire expressed in August 1985 was for uh, a much less expensive uh, delivery vehicle or delivery system. I, uh, of course, we all have seen that realized in calendar 1986 with the 3610AE. Um, the Genera 7 project team um, modified Genera 7 slightly so that it behaves a bit differently and calls itself Release 7AE when it runs on a 3610. But as mentioned earlier in the substrate section, we are able by doing something that simple to provide the entire substrate uh, 
as a delivery environment for applications, and that's, that is consistent with what our application developers uh, told us they needed. Um, we are still continuing, incidentally, to look for ways to uh, support delivery with even higher performance on systems as small or even smaller uh, than 3610. So there is more work to do there, but we've made a lot of strides as a company in that area. Uh, the third thing that where we've made a lot of progress is that uh, the August 1985 statement um, promised some way of cross-compiling from 3600s to uh, the Apollo and Sun workstations using the Motorola 68000 series chips. Uh, we do have that product uh, for sale now that we uh, did through a third party. Um, that product is of limited utility in some respects because it does require that the application developer limit him or herself to standard common list features and leave out things that are uh, valuable, such as object-oriented programming. On the other hand, it does allow uh, you, for instance, as a sales force to uh, to help customers forestall a decision like buying Sun workstations as development vehicles so that because they feel they're going to end up delivering on Sun. Uh, the fourth area mentioned in the August 85 statement was the desire to use uh, personal computers of various kinds um, uh, connected with ours where ours would be knowledge servers and the PCs would be less expensive front ends. Uh, that's the one area in which we explicitly ruled out any technology development in Release 7, and we still haven't um, done that. But we are looking now at some very promising new technology inside the company and in the industry as a whole that we think will give us some help there. Uh, now a few words just about the Release 7 project itself. Uh, I stated before that the missions were defined and published in March of 1985. Uh, six months later, we uh, had finished the development plan, where, which among other things stated what our schedule was and uh, uh, what some of the constraints were, such as the delivery options we were going to work on or not work on. Um, uh, that plan also stated that the ship date for Release 7 would be August of, uh, excuse me, October of 1986. Um, that was September of 85. Two months later in November, we delivered Release 7 point, uh, excuse me, 6.1. Uh, in, by April of 1986, this year, we had a uh, frozen Genera 7 system ready to begin field testing, and we then began uh, the fairly long and, and elaborate program some of you know about for uh, training of our beta test and customers and also uh, classroom training at, of uh, uh, our third-party marketing customers, uh, not all of whom were beta test sites. Um, by three months later in July, <coughs> excuse me, we had completed our beta testing and uh, we had also completed the last classroom training of uh, our early release third-party customers and of our own TSSEs. So by then, all of those people had experimental Genera 7 worlds in hand and had received some level of classroom training. Uh, incidentally, as, as you no doubt remember, the uh, G machines also were introduced, uh, announced in July for immediate delivery. And we also began work with marketing on uh, the uh, marketing literature for Genera 7 and for the G machines. And of course, just as another note, in, in the first quarter of this fiscal year, uh, the 3620 and 3650 began shipping um, uh, with release 6.G, which was a, re a version of, of release 6 that we developed to port to the G machines and have something to ship until release 7 was ready. Um, by October of 1986, the originally scheduled date, we had delivered release 7 to Chatsworth and also had shipped it directly from here in Cambridge to our installed base. Uh, now in, uh, uh, in this month, we have Genera 7 shipping from Chatsworth on both uh, L and G machines and has been for about six weeks now. Uh, the main point I wanted to emphasize in saying all this was that from the time we first decided what our overall abstract missions were to the time we uh, delivered the commercial product, uh, only 18 months elapsed, and only about 40 people were involved in all of the activities that uh, were required to do this most elaborate and 
and uh, careful of our projects up to, up to this date. Um, about 15 of those 40 people were software engineers, about eight of them were technical writers, uh, five or six of them were quality assurance engineers, and uh, five or six were course developers and instructors in education services who uh, not only trained the early release and beta customers, but also began that early to develop their own courses for conversion from release six to release seven and for uh, just converting their, their current courses to use Generous 7 technology. Um, if, if some of you have done the arithmetic in your heads already, that may strike you as, as something remarkable, but only something like uh, 50 or 60 person years were required to build an extremely high technology uh, new generation architecture into a commercial product. Uh, yes, that is fairly remarkable, and I, I congratulate all the contributors on the project. On the other hand, uh, it is the usual one-fifth of the time that it takes uh, us and our customers with the kind of technology we have uh, to develop something this large compared with the traditional companies and their developers uh, who would generally have taken many more people and, and many more years to do this kind of work. Uh, there are a few things mentioned, worth mentioning now that kind of dropped by the way, wayside or our goals we expressed in the development plan that we did not meet or have not yet met. Uh, one is that we wanted to um, have the authoring tools or writer's tools for our document examiner uh, available simultaneously with release 7 as an optional product. Uh, we now know that we're, we're not going to be able to make that or come very close, that it will be uh, Genera 7.2 next calendar year before we're able to do that. Uh, another thing is that we did want to provide language-based editing for LISP programmers. That would give LISP programmers the same kind of templates that Pascal programmers have in their own editing mode on, on the system. Um, the last thing that's really worth emphasizing here is that as hard as we tried with the early release program with third parties, we didn't manage to exactly synchronize the appearance of Genera 7 versions of their products with Genera 7 itself. Uh, notably, I'm talking about IntelliCorp and Inference. Uh, IntelliCorp is lagging us by a bit, and Inference is by a significantly longer period, another month or two after IntelliCorp, I suspect. But in both cases, we uh, are continuing to work with those customers, and we feel that uh, uh, by the third quarter of our fiscal year, um, th both companies should have generous seven versions of their products available for uh, the use of their customers. Um, so some overall thoughts about today's product and uh, um, how it's being accepted and so on. Uh, I'm as aware first, as many of you are, that we are having some acceptance problems with generous seven right now. Um, and they basically amount to things in three categories. The first is the effort being spent by many people to convert to common LISP. What, we've, what we have learned from the beta test experience, uh, among others, is that even though we don't require it and actually don't recommend it, many customers are taking advantage of our emphasis on common LISP in this product to completely convert very large applications of theirs to common LISP from Zeta LISP. Um, what that means is that they're spending their time doing something they didn't expect to do and that we didn't expect them to do. Uh, it's time that they are not spending uh, on other parts of the system like dynamic windows, and they're not learning as much about that yet. And I believe also from talking to some of these customers that uh, the experience is adding up in their minds to a feeling that Genera 7 takes a while to get up to speed with. and. Uh, um, anyway, that's uh, as much as I can say about that right now. Um, we do have some plans in uh, Genera 7.1, given that people are doing this, to provide some additional tool technology we now have that will allow people to use some computer assistance to, com to uh, convert from Zeta Lisp to Common Lisp. Uh, we've already used these tools in-house, for example, to uh, convert a rather large system like the document examiner from Zeta Lisp to Common Lisp, which took about 48 hours of one person's time. Um, uh, the other, uh, the next category of, of resistance 
we're getting it has to do with one or the other kind of performance concern. Now, there are two things to say about this category. One is that an awful lot of people, uh, including some customers, are talking about um, degraded performance when they can only possibly have uh, viewed the system, maybe seen a demo or seen someone else using it, and they just can't possibly know as individuals what it's actually like to use the system because they haven't done that yet. That's one thing to say, that there's a certain amount of rumor and perception here rather than reality. The other thing to say, though, is that um, it is not an imaginary phenomenon. There are performance degradations of certain kinds that are real and measurable and that we know about, and many of which are, are tractable for us to fix in a fairly short period of time. So in Genera 7.1, we do expect to address uh, a great many of the more tractable performance areas, in, in, including some where uh, customers haven't yet come across the problems, but we have and um, already have fixes for them. Uh, the last point to make, which actually some of our customers and beta test users made for us, was that um, there is a huge amount of new technology to be absorbed and learned by application developers. Uh, even if Dynamic Windows were the only such example, which it isn't, uh, it is a major new architecture and is not easy to learn. Uh, it takes time. We do believe that people are getting intrigued, though, and they will put in the time and will, in fact, talk about Genera 7 as, as the architectural advance it is. Meanwhile, we're pleased to say that we do have faster delivery performance. We have a true fourth generation software architecture. We have more leadership in Common Lisp than ever. Uh, we have done a very careful product introduction. Uh, we have measured a vast increase in programmer productivity. And as some of our recent evidence from our own training courses show, we not only have a more powerful product here, but we have one that new students are finding easier to use and easier to learn. So thanks a lot. I'll see you in Florida and uh, have your questions ready for me.